the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We are going to pray. I have about 20 minutes. I will talk about something within that 20 minutes. We are going to judiciously use our time. But for the next three or four minutes, you're going to cry, whether you want to go on your knees, whether you want to do whatever, you're going to say, Lord, forgive me. If I'm to be sincere, I know that certain things have replaced you. It may not be that you are bad. I'm not, this is not a call to condemnation. It's a call to repentance, to say, Lord, you don't have to go on your knees, or what, but whatever position is comfortable, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice take joy my King in what you hear, help me. I return I don't know when the passion for ministry took your place I didn't even realize that this is how far I veered off ah cry 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 Oh 
I belong to you total surrender my heart my life my everything you're not wasting your time man of God this is the secret to genuine power more than just principles your experience with God for some of you you need to repent you have been distracted you veered off looking for many things minutes we are praying there is a work of purging that God is doing in someone's life purging God is purging God is purging how I love to stand for you how I love to worship you keep praying and even though it hurts me for every step I take and even though it pains me for every move I make but I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Hug and adore. Hug and Your soul, Joseph, voice 
says, One more time. is not of God. Let the fire from your altar 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 While you are worshipping God is sorting your business while you are worshiping God is arranging things for you while you're worshiping God is arranging the people who will come and sow the land for the church forget about the sorrow go ahead something is happening here my voice lifted up I will sing your praise. My hands lifted up. I will worship you. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace, not denial. It's no need to cry. You're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Oh, Mary, my I got me Go ahead and worship him. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. Come on, sing to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorrow away, giving me peace, undeniable. 
command the restoration of your passion for God a restoration of your passion for some of you after this conference you will start your own retreat with God because God is calling you you may need to shut down even in the secular we have public holidays where you shut down things so that you can face family or honor a national day or whatever it is God is calling you man of God by now you would have been a mighty prophet by now your business would have gone around the world but you have been searching for every other thing and you ignore the lover of your soul get back to the place of the altar leave me at the altar with my father leave me at the altar with my father leave me at the altar with my father listen you see until you understand the place of genuine love it is the one secret i found and when i found it it was a master secret love oh i love him i love him i love him i can tell you that you want to see god prosper you second chronicles 26 5 for as long as he sought the lord the lord made him you can try to make yourself vain is the help of man the lord made him to be the leading man of god within his city the lord made him the lord made her the lord made your products that all of a sudden within one month your product is what is being patronized all over Enugu. And people are saying by what means a covenant happened if if a gentleman comes here right now and by evening he returns back and tells you he's a billionaire you will not tell him what did you do you will say where did you go because this kind of wealth is not about what you have done again there there has to be a covenant that has produced this kind of speed we're talking of soaring some of you have lingered too long that is where anger and jealousy and pain and petty things come from you can allow the lover to lift you and you will find yourself soaring in dimensions you never imagined this is my life sit down for five minutes let me introduce something to you and then we'll wrap up just leave those under the anointing leave them to have their time with god the conference is like a retreat for some of you. Yes. Help us to love you. Help us to live for you. May we never match you with business may we never match you with church no. may we never match you with anointing prayer is not God prayer is only there because there is God fasting is not God fasting is only necessary because there is God Bible study is not God God is not a page he's alive all and everything points to him and when your life fails and ceases to point to him you are then in trouble let me introduce just one more concept proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 i touch on this and we're done i spoke about the depth and the richness of your experience with God Proverbs 13 13 and verse 20 just one last word 13 and 20 please give it to us 1 3 and 2 0 Proverbs 13 and verse 20 let's read together if you can see it ready one to read he that walketh with wise men 
shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please read it one more time he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools the bible tells us very clearly from psalm 115 and verse 16 i believe psalm 115 and verse 16 it says the highest heavens or the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but the earth has he given to the children of men that means when it has to do with functioning in the earth the cosmos this is the world of men even though owned by god listen carefully if you do not understand this your leadership will fail i just needed to introduce this even though the earth is the lord's listen carefully the steward of the earth is man the owner of the earth is the lord's that means for you to excel in life you must know both the owner and the steward are we together now yes most of us here rent houses and usually you don't have the privilege of seeing the owner or knowing the owner except in a few instances there usually is someone between the owner and the tenant called the caretaker is that true and the caretaker has been mandated by the owner to protect his interest as far as that business is concerned am i correct on that so it is the 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 caretaker who does all the negotiations the paperwork and whatever it is and the overseas and then there is a care the earth that we function in belongs to the lord psalm 24 but psalm 115 is saying the stewardship of the earth is in the hands of man that means whatever happens in the earth is not a reflection of the power of god it's a reflection of the faithful stewardship or the mismanagement of that caretaker if you do not have this wisdom understanding about the cosmos you can be spiritual and you will still fail this world is the world of men hallelujah when god put man in the garden he gave him stewardship and even when he saw him failing he still honored his decision that is how faithful god is that means it is possible for god to speak excellent things over your life your church your business your state and yet you do not see God manifest on that wise because we do not understand the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos. Every time I talk to leaders, if I have one thing to teach them is this understanding of men. Yesterday we began to discuss and our time is gone so I'm just going to touch it and then we're done on being helped by God. And I did teach you that there are three expressions of the help of God. Number one is the ministry of mercy. Number two is the gift of man. That means every time God wants to help an individual and help a leader, he introduces you to man. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? not the son of man that thou visitest him you find that in psalm 8 it says for thou has made him lower than elohim you have crowned him with glory and honor active to psalm 8 and it says you have set him over the works of hands and in doing so you did not leave anything that was not under his feet you have to appreciate that mankind listen carefully the human species is the zenith of god's creation that means God bound himself with a covenant that every time he has to function in the earth, he will need a man to walk in partnership with him. He can do without a man, but he has so chosen by his predeterminate counsel to not walk outside of men. So, the world is the world of men. I don't have time, I would have described for you the condition to be a man because to be a man you first have to be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man are we together now every man is first a spirit but a spirit alone cannot be called man you have to be a spirit that is hosted in a physical body there are all kinds of bodies 
but the only body that makes an individual to be called man is a physical body and then midwifing that spirit and that body is your mental faculty okay. thank you are we together now yes so there are many spirits angels cannot be called men they are spirits but they do not have our bodies with us our our configuration is not given to them animals have physical bodies but they do not have spirits you cannot call animals men you need to understand who god gave the earth to god did not give the earth to goats or whatever it is water is physical but you cannot call water man even though water moves like man you can hear the sound like man so when it has to do with excelling in the earth if you understand your business and you do not understand men you will fail the first product you need to understand is man second only to your understanding of god the moment you understand god as far as leadership and influence and excellence is concerned you must understand man every trouble on earth today came because of man the salvation that we have received came from a man the man called jesus hmm. are we together the one who purchased salvation for us he did not purchase salvation as a spirit no he had to become a man to come and die as a man man and is today seated at the right hand of the father as a man the reason why we know jesus is coming is because he left with his body he doesn't need another body to return the assurance of his coming is because when he left he left with his body so he has satisfied the condition that still gives him allowance into the world of men the first time he could not just come because he never had a physical body so he needed to go through the labor of finding a virgin waiting for a virgin and then you know being incubated in a stomach for nine months but this time around he can come anytime because he does not need a body again now watch this everything that happens on earth happens through men you may have heard me teach that all blessings come from god through men to men all troubles come from satan through men to men because of the presence of men societies are destroyed because of the presence of men evangelism happens because of the presence of men leadership happens territorially speaking because of the presence of men the reason why some nations are called third world and others are called first world is because of men it's not the seas that make them first world or or whatever it is the battle on earth today is for the hearts and the minds of men i hope you know the battle on earth is not for gold the battle on earth is not for oil listen the battle on earth is not even for territory the greatest battle on earth is who captures the hearts and the minds of men the reason why your bank is functioning right now is because of men the reason why you want to build a business right now is because there are men in enugu if you leave enugu with goats alone and you are the only human being even if the banks and the oils and everything are left you cannot do business are you seeing that everything literally happens because of men isn't it interesting that everything happens because of men and yet most people learn every other thing but man they do not know about men but they know about business they open a school why are you opening schools because you know people will keep giving birth and their children will go to school your business literally is founded on that philosophy that the presence of men guarantees the continuity of your business some of you who have stores here if alone because there are humans and even when you cut the hair it will still grow back you cut it you literally build a business around that information why does your rest of men it is men that eat the meal 
and they will go to toilet and then return back again so if they buy your pack your bag of rice today you tell him see you next time that statement is predicated on the information that you are a man there is something about you that my business is built upon imagine if we ate once and never had to eat again farming will be useless manufacturing will be useless production will be useless it is because you know that someday this cloth i am wearing is going to go through wear and tear you literally based on that information you built a business around it in one word business is the ministry of men listen carefully please don't think i don't know what i'm saying business is not the ministry of bottles business is not the ministry of containers business is not the ministry of cars business is not the ministry of schools business is the ministry of men every other product that you call business is only a midwife the final consumer is a man so if you know your product and you do not know the man the reason why you clean your chairs very early in the morning those who clean this beautiful church when you came here early in the morning probably there was no one or maybe a few people and yet you had the confidence to set the stage because you knew that men will come imagine if you saw cows just coming maybe 30 of them would you say you are welcome god bless you find a place to sit no cows are physical things but that's not what you are looking for men any leader who does not understand men is going to fail as a pastor as a businessman the reason why most of us do not excel in our influence and our leadership is because we took our time to study any other thing and every other thing and we ignored men the zenith of God's creation if God is going to lift you it will come through men relationships are the most expensive commodities on earth relation expensive people will pride and say i'm using a a rolex watch i bought it five million naira and look at it has diamond crested in it and yet they do not know that relationships are of inestimable value you are i always pray for my people and let me extend that prayer for you may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money because if the only thing you have are notes in your house you are not wealthy the real honor of a man is not in his acquisitions the bible says it means your relationships represent the highest index of your wealth the degree to which you are connected to strategic relationships that provide a leverage to your destiny is the measure of your wealth money only comes to you through relationships it will take a hand exchanging to bring wealth to you now please listen if you do not understand this you will fail in life destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships i am here right now in this lovely church because of a relationship a relationship that started in Nairobi, Kenya, but has been maintained so greatly. Relationships. As busy as I am, there are people who, if they demand my attention, I will respond almost instantly because of the power of relationships. There are people today who did not have to do much in terms of business. They invested diligently in their relationships. And their relation. they did not even start as business people. They started as wise people because they worked with the wise and the end of their pursuit was a business and influence politicians understand this you find out somebody who never had the intention to be a governor or a senator he only followed wise people and as he followed wise people he started evolving to a version of himself that you now call a leader jesus said follow me and i will make you he never gave them any promise that you'll be called apostles he never gave them any promise that you'll be miracle workers he said follow me and i will make you through that relationship he produced those we call apostles who turned the world upside down 
listen to me relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections you may have heard me say it in my teaching that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters truly who likes you matters there are people who can make things happen for others because of the strength of relationships I know people who got jobs after praying for jobs for three five six years in less than one hour one relationship brought the job for them I know people who got land to build a church there is no true story of success that is not connected to relationships the anointing that a man receives in his life is based on relationships we just graduated our school of ministry students on Sunday glorious program and while I was praying for these people, I was looking at them and my heart reached for compassion. I said, look at what relationships can do. There are people who have no business being wealthy, except that they were around wealthy people and it became unfair for them to remain in that state. There are people who had no business being anointed, but they were around anointed people and it became unfair for them to remain at that level. If I see where you are, it is a reflection of your relationships he that walks with the wise shall be wise himself but a companion of fools shall be destroyed the man does not want to be destroyed but he's associated with people who are vulnerable to destruction and the end of it is that person is destroyed himself he that walks with the wealthy shall be wealthy he that walks with the anointed shall be anointed he that works with intelligent people shall be intelligent he that works with the godly shall be godly that means anything you want to become find those who already are that is your chance of becoming it you want to become a man of god doing ministry with the dignity of kingdom integrity you cannot have that hanging around people who compromises like their second name they don't have any regard for other and spiritual things you want to become someone of character a great leader and a visionary man there are people who are great people but all their friends are drunkards all their friends are on serious people and then they say it doesn't matter i'm not like them yet you are not like them yet you are on your way becoming a child does not know he's a child till he becomes an adult is when the child becomes an adult he say oh i once was a child so the drunkard does not know he's becoming a drunkard till he turns later on and finds out that oh i'm only doing five now listen to me most people have not learned the power of protecting their destinies by surrounding themselves with quality godly people you may have heard me say in my teachings if there are five foolish people around you you didn't count well there are six if there are five prayer warriors around you you did not count well there are six if there are five visionary people around you you did not count well there are six you are always a reflection of the company that you keep even in business come on i'm in the east here and you know there are times that you pass a street that sell electronics there are 10 shops all selling the same thing and you would think because of the presence of one they will fail and yet they will all succeed because sometimes you will not find a product in one place and the other one will lead you to another shop where you will get it and he's still happy that you got it because you will come back for their sake please hear me leaders if you are to live a qualitative destiny in this end time go ahead to begin to select quality people you must understand the power of men and how to relate with men if you do so if you do not understand relationships you can be anointed and you will be surprised that your work will remain small businessman you may never be able to scale heights and go global it takes more than being anointed the gift of men is one of the ways that God helps men to soar. 
are we together there are many things you need to know about men you need to understand the vulnerabilities of men you need to understand the inconsistencies of men you need to also understand the different kinds of men we have in our world you have to understand the kinds of relationships that are available for instance there are general relationships the Bible mandates that we treat everyone with love and caution. You go out in the morning and you meet people. General relationships. There are seasonal relationships. Relationships that come to your life for a season. The key to maximizing those relationships is discernment. To receive what they have to deliver to you fast before their expiry time. Then there are covenant or destiny relationships. These are relationships that connect directly, not just to where you are going, but the final journey. No matter what you need to do, you have to protect those relationships. For instance, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It can be a general relationship. It can be a seasonal relationship. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is not even a covenant relationship. It is your life. That means whatever goes wrong in that relationship, you have to humble yourself and swallow your pride and press. Most people do not understand the power of relationships. We keep receiving prophetic words, but relationships destroy our potential for growth and scaling heights. I want to make a statement and then I wrap up. Our father, Dadio Nubogu, this great man is 83 84 do you know one time daddy traveled down to koinonia just to come and be four years old what is this man coming to do when he can follow online and not that it was any special program and i looked at this man and i said at this age relationships relationships are investments if you tell me today daddy is not feeling fine or something is wrong I can cancel a meeting to come and honor him for his health and don't say ah it's unfair no don't demand a level of my attention in a relationship you have not invested in you see oh dear there are many people who are demanding it is fraud to demand a returns from a, you can't put one naira and want one million no there are people that have not made any meaningful investment and contributions in their lives it would be unfair for me to demand certain levels of their time their resources their attention i have not made that kind of investment in their lives you can't give god 10 minutes and want a global ministry that 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 is unfair are we together now your pastor sometimes he travels down and we just come and worship and share fellowship and he leaves and i'm saying my god look at this there are things that people do in my life that make me become indebted to them there are times that people say oh apostle you've been we are trying to call you we cannot get you but so 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 person said they called and you answered i apologize it's not injustice it's called returns on investment Are we together now? As a man of God, while everybody is trying to look for you for anointing, somebody is asking, have you eaten? Are you okay? Is God helping you? When that person is crying, will you keep quiet? If your business has not blessed anybody, you didn't raise anybody. Yesterday, Reverend was talking about the dear woman of God who helped him and all the things that she did you can imagine if for any reason she needs help reverend would get up and say once it is within my power I will go all the way listen life is hard for many people because they have not received the gift of men you have not seen men as a gift are we together if you understand this there are heights somebody met me and he made a statement he said apostle you are a very strange man he said some of the biggest women conferences in this nation you are a man and then you are going there to go and speak to women invited by the highest authorities and i looked at them 
I said well go and ask God but one thing you can know that the women who invite me are not stupid hallelujah I don't say that to brag but isn't that strange what God can do every time you see unusual results I can tell you among the many dynamics is the ministry of men the ministry of men the ministry of men some of you there is nobody in your life today right now who can give you money and don't mean a loan you can just say look um i i think i need i need to sort out something you are in trouble you are alone except god shows you mercy it is dangerous you are living in a risk are we together who loves you right now enough to say over my dead body to see this person cry have you impacted somebody's life that much for you to mean so much to them but today even if they go to be with the lord they will go rejoicing because the investments they have made in men has secured the destiny of their children to the third and to the fourth generation there are many people who will tell you what are you doing i'm in real estate what are you doing manufacturing what are you doing importation and export what are you doing maintaining relationships that is my stream of income not i'm not talking about myself alone it will take a foolish person to laugh at you and say ah you mean you are you kidding me that is an investment that does not fail it never fails because you get wealthier from capital appreciation as the person rises he will bless you to honor his perception of your relationship is someone learning now because there are many of you who can destroy men because of your products it does not matter I will push anybody it is my business you're about to crash land it takes the ministry of men when you see me honor the fathers when you see me love the people it's not from a selfish standpoint I love them sincerely but I know one recommendation from a man who loves you can open the next 10 years of your life and then one word of caution from a man of influence who has a problem with you can close a door that was once open some of you there are doors that are closed right now it's not demons that close them they were closed by men someone said be careful and that's it 20 ministrations closed because one person said be careful i can't vouch for him that's it you were in the process of a contract and they said listen five billion is involved here do you trust these people i said well i trust these two i can't speak for this and that's it by the next day you wake up after dancing and they tell you it will not work the problem was not your skill the problem was not your value the problem was that you ignored the ministry of men unbelievers understand what i'm teaching you unbelievers have mastered the art of building ladders through relationships you would hear me say it in my teachings that a man would travel from america to nigeria to attend the birthday ceremony of a ceo's daughter who is two years old is she his friend please have you not seen people travel to attend weddings of certain people you know a man who is busy so busy he flew from australia america to attend a, a, a birthday a, a wedding ceremony of a little girl or a little boy is more than that they are registering their investments i had the opportunity to pray one time for one of the governors when he became a governor you know the the thanksgiving service i was there to preach somewhere and then it happened that it was his thanksgiving service and i saw people who would never have come to church never not even near the gates of church they were there i said what are these people doing here christians muslims known herbalists known traditionalists i mean people were there and i said you see everybody understands this except the church that is the reason why we remain down lot if you are a righteous man and you are in the midst of unrighteous men you are still not safe your personal righteousness may not deliver you from sodom and gomorrah you will need abraham to come and help you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed 
by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.